am Soledad. I'm with um, Democracy Now. Can you tell me your name? My name's Alana Willinson. Um, your age, please? I'm 13 years old. Are you here with an organization or your school? I know. I am here with my brother and my mom and my dad. Why did you guys decide to come here today? We decided to come here because I, I don't want to be scared walking into school. I want more gun reform laws, and I just want all in all just for people to be safe, and I want just people to live good lives. Like, this isn't the... This isn't the America that I wanted to grow up in. I wanted to grow up in an America with peace, not an America where kids are constantly getting killed by assault weapons. This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman broadcasting from the march for our lives. Washington, D.C. 800 sibling marches all over the country. We have students Nate Larson and Dylan Hetro here broadcasting from the 91.3 transmitter tower located in San Jose. Youth Media Project's first endeavor, along with a public movement choosing March for Our Lives, following gun control rights in schools and whether or not teachers should be armed. We'll be playing this for the rest of the morning, and you can tune in at any time here on 91.3 LP FM, Bisbee. I'm Nathaniel Larson. I'm a senior at uh, Bisbee High School. I'm Dylan Hetro. I'm a sophomore at Bisbee High. And uh, he's the station director, and I'm the program director for KISJ, uh, the student-ran high school station. And we, uh, Almost student-ran. <laughs> our specialization is that it is, in fact, student-organized, run, put on the air. Everything is based off of the students. We have an adult mentor, which is the school teacher, the program music and media director teacher, who uh, gets everyone started on the right foot as a first-year student, and then they have a chance to progress if they choose to pursue a career in the CTE music and media field. To where they can eventually progress to like you know running a radio station and who is that oh uh, that's ryan bruce all right i'm just gonna cut it all right tell us when you're live right. thank you for tuning in to kisj lp 91.3 bisbee I'm here with Dylan Hetro, and we are um, broadcasting from Eads Construction Yard in San Jose. Uh, we are uh, pleased to bring you the Democracy Now! March for Our Lives, and uh, we hope that you guys enjoy the, the, the many voices and, uh, and concerns of all the students that survived these, uh, these tragic shootings. So we just heard that little talk by veterans about the power of some of these rifles and how that none of them can be compared as, you know, their own thing, that they're all assault rifles, they're all tools of death and destruction and things that America does not need to function. You know, we stick to these, you know, constitutional colonial rules and amendments about defense that don't have any form of application in the modern sense. And so this really gives chance to lawmakers and members of Congress to finally make a decision and start saving American lives. Because American lives in high school should not be jeopardized like this is a war zone. So we hope that everyone will listen in and join us as we hear the concerns of students all across the nation broadcasted in Washington, D.C. And keep listening on KISJLP 91.3 Bisbee. Thank you and stick around. Cool. Yeah. Literally, you guys are not even indoors. You're <laughs> no. Nope. It's not big enough. The entire room is full of ele electronics and equipment. This side is the uh, transmitter, emergency status, everything like that. That side is the Mac programming and everything that goes with the music playing. I'd like you to talk about what what Ryan's firing means to you. Yeah. So Dylan, I'm asking about. Um, <laughs> So Ryan started this whole program? Yeah. Yes, this was uh, all in his thought. This started as a brainchild several years ago as the Youth Media Project when he began volunteer teaching at Bisbee High. I, I was heartbroken to see someone who's worked so hard every day for the past almost 13 years to just be removed like he was nothing. And feeling like you can't do anything about it. Like, I talked at that meeting with like 60 other people and and all he had to say was okay next person you know like there's no there's no feedback no sentimental you know there's no sympathy it was just like sucks i've been volunteering there for three years and never met anybody on the board at all i never talked to anyone except for andy heratic that was it 
I knew members, I knew plenty of members because members went into the Royale every day. But to me, I felt like the board was just kind of not there. The dishonesty of the board and some of these choices that they've made is pretty disgraceful to me. Um, especially in the sense that the way they can treat someone who's turned the Royale and KBRP, KBRP, excuse me, into such a blossoming opportunity for the community. You're aware yeah. there's a petition to yes. recall the board? I've, I've signed yeah, the we, petition. We've already signed yeah. the petition, yeah. And will either of you consider running for the board of uh, directors I, yourself? They asked me uh, at the last meeting if I wanted to be part of the board, and uh, I just don't think I can... Like, the problem with the board now is I feel like they're not doing enough for KBRP. So, by being part of the board, I would want to do more than them. If given the opportunity, I would run for the board in a heartbeat. Um, I know that I'll be here for a minimal one more year, and I feel that I could put forth the experience that I've taken from watching the board and their problems that I know that I can rectify and that, you know, a board should function as a board. No one individual should have more power, and with a board of people with similar mindsets all compelled to do the same thing, that's how nonprofits function and develop and just turn into the amazing thing that they are when they establish that foothold in the community as a substantial organization. You know, KBRP hosts Blues Fest every year, and they have for a, a, almost 10 years, if not more, hosted Blues Fest. And it's one of the biggest community events that draws a lot of public attention to Bisbee, not just for the concert that afternoon, but Bisbee being a heavily tourist-related economy gives other businesses, small-town businesses, a chance to earn a little bit of profit, which shows that KBRP as a nonprofit has a mutual relationship, you know, similar to like an anemone and a clownfish, they benefit from each other, and that if you lose KBRP, and, and by lose, I mean right now it's not on the path of, you know, success right now. If KBRP can maintain its foothold, KBRP will, KBRP will continue to be one of the best organizations in Bisbee and continue to benefit every members of all generations throughout the next coming years.